Which side are you on? Which side? Barbara Rose Johnston is an award-winning anthropologist and senior research fellow at the Center for Political Ecology. She is affiliated member of the faculty at Michigan State and at UC Santa Cruz, exploring the intersections between environment, health, and human rights. She is an expert witness for the Marshall Islands Nuclear Claims Tribunal. Uh, and she has a recent book, A Consensual Damages of Nuclear War, the Rungalap, Rungalap Report, and Life and Death Matters, Human Rights, Environment, and Social Justice. Ms. Johnson. I'd like to say that I'm glad to be here, but I'm not. I'm very, very sad to be here. I'm sad in part because I was asked to speak about the Marshall Islands, and we don't have Marshall Islanders standing here. Sad but true. Sad but true. Many of the people that I have worked with since 1998, intimately since uh, a decade even earlier at a distance, are not with us. Average age of death in the Marshall Islands is 62. Look around. How many here are younger than 62? Right? It's quite a statement. It's quite a statement to say. So I'm sad, I'm very sad, um, but I'm also very happy to be here. The last time I stood before a gathering, we talked about nuclear issues and what does it mean and where are we going, was in the Marshall Islands, where we had Marshall Islands Nuclear Remembrance Day earlier this year. And it was an amazing experience. These are people who have hosted nuclear war. They can tell you inside out what nuclear war means, what the consequential damages are because it's showing out in the first, second, third, fourth generations, and it will continue to show out for the next fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and then beyond. When you have population-wide exposures, when you host 67 atmospheric weapons and atomizing islands and detonating balloons and lagoons, you're, you are permanently altered, profoundly altered, and that passes along through the generations. People here at the lab, this is a very appropriate place to gather. People here at the lab have been studying and, uh, in part the human health effects, in part the thorny problems of what do we do with the most contaminated place that the U.S. has ever created. What do we do with Inuitak and, and the Runet Dome, uh, where the remains of, of, of many of the weapons that were tested in, in Inuitak Atoll were uh, stored. Has anyone here heard of Runet Dome? Right? So, uh, when EPA was first created, one of the first tasks was how do we implement EPA? And one of the first thorny problems was what are we going to do in the Marshall Islands? It was a thorny problem because the Marshallese made it so, because of Marshallese activism and advocacy. And the, the solution at the time was temporary. It was too big of a problem. They figured at some point science will figure this out. And this temporary solution is still in place. It's still temporary. You have three to four inches of concrete covering Runet Dome on Inuitak, which concrete made out of radioactive reefs, out of coral, mixed with seawater, means that it's porous. It, rain falls down, falls through the cracks, and underneath the dome is, is where much of the contam highly contaminated contaminated debris was dumped. That means ships, that means bunkers, that means remains of, of atomized soil, plants and so forth, but especially the metals, all transformed under a three inch, three to four inch cap of cement that's porous. Water filtrates down into the lagoon, into the oceans. On the beaches of China, on the, on the coast of China, you have the Runet signature. So this has been emanating for years. And there are people here who are studying and documenting and assisting the Marshallese in trying to figure out what to do. So it's, I want to say this because we're standing here on this day when a, yet another American president promises the world to reign, fire and fury, unlike the world, unleashing this onto the world. Uh, we've known this before. And we know what it will do. 
And as we stand here, we stand here with a, a loud force of people who say, no, no more. So I'm, I'm happy to be here to articulate what I found when I went back last March to the Marshall Islands. I did not find people who, who were um, uh, coward, who were depressed, who are, uh, this is hopeless. They should be what, I, what you would find, what you would expect if you've suffered so much, if, if the ob, uh, obligations by the United States are persistently denied in Congress, at the United Nations, the, the assistance is, is minuscule. The little pie chart that was shown earlier of weapons and cleanup and assistance, it's a tiny little sliver that assists the most polluted place on the planet that the United States has created. But what I found was positive, immensely positive. Because we are ocean people. This is the Marshallese approach and perspective. And the challenges of nuclear war and the challenges of climate change are one and the same. The Anthropocene really started at ground zero and the Marshallese stand as ground zero in the face of both. And they are determined to say no, not for our generations, not for the futures that come. So I'm sad and sorry that Tony de Bruyne, one of the, the key characters in the Marshallese fabric of the last so <laughs> 60, 70 years truly, cannot be here to talk to you. Because if he could, if he wasn't in his hospital bed, this is where he would be to say no. Not in our watch, no. If one man can go to the United Nations, can, can, can take nine nations of the world to, to the International Court of Justice, can put these issues back on the level, if one man can push the climate change treaties to the point of a, um, a coordinating and coming up with a, a coalition of high ambition saying, and, and being recognized as the person who facilitated and got that treaty signed. If, if those two things, the ICJ lawsuits and the, and the climate change treaty come together, they come together in, the, in a patchwork that we need for the future. One man made a difference. One man, one woman, one child, we can all make a difference. And so the Marshallese story really has a lot to offer. Yes, you can learn a lot about the pain and the tragedy and the suffering. More importantly, you can look, learn a lot about where people are putting their priorities and the individuals make a difference. Collectively, we can all make a difference. So, yokwe, yokwe. Shalom, peace, salam, shalom.